Hey, what's up, you guys? Um, I was not planning on doing this, but I had some things on my mind that I really wanted to just put out there. And I know I did a State of TNA video a little while ago, but this is more about the business in general. And this kind of came out of some things that RVD Tito for Life said recently, so I guess you can consider this a response to Bill's Back to Basics video. Basically, a lot of things that I've been seeing lately from both companies have me very concerned. Uh, I see WWE going in this completely awful direction. I see TNA being so hit and miss with their product and pushing all these people who shouldn't even be on television. You know, I, I tune into Raw. I see a former two-time Intercontinental Champion getting squashed by a midget, a, a freaking leprechaun. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? That is the stupidest shit I've ever seen. I mean, if they tried that in 1998 or 1999, the audience would have pissed all over it. And that's the whole. Pr I think that's the whole problem is that the WWE isn't marketing their product to the same type of audience that was watching back when it was cool to be a wrestling fan. They're marketing their product to the audience that were fans before that era started. And when you think about it, right now both companies really have their heads stuck in the past. WWE is stuck in the mindset of the 1980s when everything was just really campy and corny and aimed at really young, immature audiences. And TNA has their mindset stuck in the 1990s when there was all this weird, crazy stuff going on and they're pushing all these people who were big in the 90s like Kevin Nash, Scott Steiner, and they're pushing certain character archetypes that were big back then, these diva-ish personalities like Charmel, who's not even a wrestler but somehow gets booked in a wrestling match from out of nowhere, and Christy Hemi, who is the absolute last woman that TNA should be getting behind on general principles. Because she was a product of a WWE diva search, which is everything that the Knockouts division is supposed to be against. I mean, instead of taking some model-turned-wrestler with very limited in-ring skills, who, by the way, is coming off a year-long losing streak, and, you know, all of a sudden start pushing her against Awesome Kong, instead of doing all that, why don't you try to highlight what makes these women different from the WWE divas and get behind a real wrestler? You know, get, get Sarah Del Rey in there. Have her freaking annihilate Christy Hemi and push her against Awesome Kong, because she can sell it. Christy cannot. And, I mean, yeah, maybe you wouldn't be able to get Sarah, but at least try to arrange a tryout match or something. I mean, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but at least give it a shot. I mean, and as as I watch all this stuff happening, I'm just... I'm starting to suspect that neither company really knows what they're doing at all right now. And it's, ju it's just like what Doug said, how when they came out of this previous era that had exposed so much of the business to the fans, they couldn't figure out how to market their product to the changing audience anymore. So instead of trying to change and evolve the business, they decided to go back to what they know. They, they, they tried to pull the wool over our eyes again and go back to what was working before. You know, it's like The Wizard of Oz, where you find out at the end that he's just some guy behind a curtain, and now they're trying to pull that curtain back and just go back to living in a fantasy world again instead of reality. And it doesn't work, because the fans are so much smarter now. We, we've, got internet, we've all got internet connections. We can log on to, like, PW Insider or something and find out about all this stuff that's going on backstage in real life and you can't do these things that couldn't possibly exist in real life anymore because now everyone knows exactly how fake it really is I mean, wrestling fans wouldn't be tuning in if we didn't want to be entertained I mean, we're, and we're perfectly willing to suspend our disbelief up to a point but and, and we can accept a certain amount of weirdness but you've got to meet us halfway I mean, we know pro wrestling takes place within a fictional bubble, you know? But you still have to try to maintain the illusion that it's real. You can't take the product into frickin' bizarro world and expect an intelligent audience to buy into it. You can't have your wrestlers getting jobbed out to a fucking midget just because little kids like the midget. And you can't book some stupid, weird-ass gimmick match just for the sake of being innovative without bothering to get it to make sense within the context of the storyline and the characters. That crap doesn't work anymore. I mean, when you do that stuff, you're catering to the absolute most fickle and casual fan base there is. You're catering to the people who will tune in for like five or ten minutes to watch, maybe laugh at some of the stuff they see, and then they'll get bored and change the channel and switch over to watch Dancing with the Stars or some garbage like that. And you know all those little kids that you're trying to pull in, that you're trying to market to? What's going to happen when those kids grow up? When they get a little older? When they get a little smarter? when they get a little more mature they start looking for a product that's more serious that's more cutting edge that's more adult you really think they're gonna stick around for leprechauns and fart jokes or are they gonna get tired of that crap and start watching the UFC instead now 
TNA are a little closer to giving me that type of product that I'm looking for, that serious product. You know, you, you see it with the rough cut videos on Impact or this new videography series they're doing on for the YouTube page, which I think is a great idea. They need to go more in that direction and get away from a lot of the crap that they're doing on the TV show. But sometimes it's just so hard to get invested in what they do because there's just so many flaws in their creative process right now and they try so hard to be creative and innovative and shocking that you think that at any point they could just go off on some weird crazy new direction just for the sake of being different and the whole thing's gonna fall apart I mean how can you invest your emotions in Lethal and Sanjay when they're having a black tie brawl and chain match you can't it's just so goofy you can't take it seriously and I've had all this stuff flying around in my head now for so long and I, I really think that it's time for the fans to take matters into our own hands. I mean, all us fans on YouTube, on the internet, we're the real fans. But the product is not for us right now. And there's got to be something that we can do to change the way that this crap is presented to us. I mean, and I, and I got news for you guys. Uploading a bunch of YouTube videos is not going to do it. Because we can talk, talk, talk until we're blue in the face, but nothing ever changes. Because YouTube allows us to have a voice. But what's the point of having a voice if no one's listening? And right now, the people who run the pro wrestling industry are not listening to us. And we've got to change that. We've got to start making so much noise that they can't help but listen. And, and yeah, maybe they still wouldn't take our concerns seriously, but at least then they'd know that there's a growing number of fans out there that are getting really pissed off. And I don't, I don't know what we could do. Um, you know, maybe write letters or... Um, do a mass email campaign or like organize an online petition or something but the bottom line is that is that it's become really very clear that this stuff is not gonna stop until someone forces it to stop the fans have got to take action I just don't know what we need to do yet